Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. Let's get into it. Thank you very much, Far Software Services. Got one from Australia. Willoughby here in uh, Sydney. No wackers. So it's pretty decently heavy. So I don't know what on earth is in there. Oh, God, cats. Cat stamps. I hate cats. I've just lost a thousand subscribers. Yes, the most subscribers I've ever lost is when I said I hate cats or I made a bad cat joke once. Lost thousands of subscribers. Anyway. Anyway. So, let's have a squiz. Got a note. Thank you very much. Um, oh, it's a bunch of, like, random old stuff. Where's all the weight? Where's all the weight? Oh, wow. They're, um, what are they? They're like, um... Oh, they're, they're big stud diodes, are they, or something? I don't know. They've got, like, a, a wire coming off them, which doesn't seem... They're like a big stud something or other. Another one. I assume it's a big stud diode. Whoa, man, look at the size of that. Got some really big-ass electrical, none of this electronics rubbish, <laughs> electrical stuff. Wow, they've got to be, like... You know, massive diodes or something, but I, I don't know. There could be something else. But uh, that's usually... Jeez, there's a lot of... This video's full of studs! Thank you very much, Robert. Thought you might like these Mailbag Monday for these, as I've not seen any old-school high-power electronics components on there. These were spares for an 80 kVA ferro-resonant uh, inverter. They're, they're interesting, the ferro-resonant uh, ones. Are, you know, are they still a thing? I think they're still a specialised thing. I know a company here in Sydney, they used to make uh, ferro-resonant... Uh, well, well uh, ferro-resonant power supplies. They're like ultra... I think one of the things with them is that they're ultra-reliable, aren't they? Uh, the part numbers, I suspect, were specific to the equipment they were made for. There was an ongoing issue with the LCRs becoming leaky, seemingly due to moisture ingress through the ceramic to the metal seal. That's interesting. Uh, which could uh, show some signs of corrosion. Probably not helped by the unit being very close to the salty area of Botany Bay, yeah. I've hung on to these for years thinking one day I'll make something that gives me an excuse to use them, but it's hard to find enough time to, <laughs> to mow the grass so the decades have just rolled by. Yeah, I've still got stuff in component drawers since when I was a kid. So yeah, I, I'll see if we can find something on here, but I can see like 400 amps, 1500 volts, is it? Wow, show some up closies. So Rob sent in some awesome power diodes and uh, SCRs here and just <laughs> take a look at these beasts. I mean, they're just absolutely enormous. This is a, this would be like a uh, shocky diode. Um, SC, like you look up the part numbers for these and uh, 45th week, uh, 1978. So ancient stuff, but of course, you know, there'd be nothing wrong with it. It'd still work, um, but they're absolute beasts. These are uh, like stud uh, diodes, uh, they call them, or, uh, you know, there's other packages like uh, D08 uh, packages like these ones, smaller ones, but, yeah, it's just, these are just absolutely enormous. So that would probably, is that like 1,300? The part numbers usually give away the current uh, and the voltage uh, rating. So that, that could be 1,300 amps. I mean, just that kind of beefiness. Yeah, uh, I can picture that being 1,300 amps. And uh, D30, well, it was only 30 volts, I doubt it. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's got to be a uh, diode E. That would be a shocky diode. And this would be the SCR. And this is what uh, Rob was talking about, uh, water ingress. Because this is a ceramic uh, top on it. And it would get water ingress, of course. Of course, this is the uh, gate pin for it. And it's got another wire coming off here. Um, I presume they, they, they just go into there. That's just uh, uh, tapping off like a voltage uh, sense line, like right here. So they're just, uh, you know, taking into account the loss on the uh, cable here so they can measure right across the diode itself thing. Anyway, yeah, this would definitely be the gate of the uh, SCR, the silicon controlled rectifier. And once again, a big stud package. Um, yeah, you look up those numbers and you can't get anything uh, for it. But yeah, get water in into there it's just a manufacturing uh, thing and then it just uh, creeps in along the internal uh, wiring through the cer ceramic uh, you get penetration in there and well that can yeah eventually ruin your day this one here you know, recognize the symbol IR international rectifier th for the win thank you very much um yeah that's another uh, SCR there and you can see they've actually got oh, you can just note the SCR symbol on there 
And this is probably the uh, closest example we've got uh, to one that we can uh, potentially know uh, the specs for. Anyway, once again, international rectifier, and it's got the diode symbol instead of the SCR symbol this time. Uh, but oh, bloody reflections are terrible on this. But you notice it's got 600, 150. And you can actually still buy uh, these. This is like a D08 uh, package. And date code 42 week, 1988. Made in Mexico. Thank you very much. Hi to all my Mexican viewers. Back when they, do they still make, you know, semis in... Mexico? I don't know. Leave it in the comments. Anyway, this would be 600 amps. And is that one? Is that 150? I think that's 150 uh, volt rating. So big 600 amp shocky diode. <laughs> what a beast. And you can just see the uh, ceramic isolation around there. And sorry, but uh, I'm not going for the mailbag. I'm not going to get out a Dremel and uh, try and crack open one of these. I'm not even, you know, they'd be fully potted inside. I'm not sure you'd actually uh, see anything. You'd have to do like a proper cross section or something like that. And then you've got uh, these bad boys. Here you go. These are actually actually stamped uh, 400 amps 150 volts thank you very much lousy 150 volts jeez so thank you very much rob for sending these in uh, absolutely fascinating if you do have uh you know exact like a data sheet for uh, any of these at bad boys then uh, please leave it in the comments but just look at the size of that conductor that's just insane it's just braid <laughs> enormous anyway these are like little runty but i'm sure there's viewers out there who just go oh these are just little runty ones you know i work with big man ones workbench of the week time you saw it in the background there thank you very much lewis from uh, brussels in belgium hi to all my belgian viewers so let's have a look yeah it's better to do the Dave head like this, I think. It just, you know, it's, it's just easier than the physical screen. Anyway, we have an editing desk over here. Oh, dual, rock and jewel webcams there. Uh, got the Yamaha speakers. So it looks like he does some uh, mixing. That's one of those mixing uh, desk thingies, console thingies, isn't it? And that there looks like the same camcorder I'm using. That looks like the NX80. Uh, that's my main uh, camcorder. So it road shoddy on the top. We've got a, a stereoscopic a microphone we've got the good old Heiko triple uh, eight uh, and a bunch of Rigol yeah this looks <laughs> looks like Rigol gear for everything maybe you got a package deal on um, everything here so yeah we've got the uh, the meter the power supply the function gen the scope and uh, the signal analyzer as well reflow oven down here um, and it looks like a 3d printers galore and a CNC down the bottom there I got another and there's another shot of it so there you go that's uh quite neat and tidy very uh comprehensive and uh yeah I guess do multiple it's very important if you like if you're doing lots of 3d printing yeah you have multiple ones and you just like or you have them like look maybe set up with like pre-set up with like different filaments and pre-set up differently so it depends on your requirements and stuff like that 3d printers are like throwaway price these days aren't they um but yeah Anyway, there you go. Neat. Thank you very much, Lewis. And yes, missed all those uh, tubs at the top there. Neat. So that is a nice little setup. Got some uh, uh, Pelican cases down here as well. So yeah, that's excellent. It looks like, yeah, custom uh, shelving by the looks of it. That's a really nice solution. I like that. Neat and tidy. A very efficient use of space. Very comprehensive. Beauty. I did open this one, well, partly because it didn't have mailbag on it. PO Box 7949, Norwest, New South Wales. You can still use Borkham Hills, but Norwest is now officially a suburb. So, yeah, Norwest, uh, New South Wales, 2153, Australia, not Austria. But you've got to put mailbag on there. Otherwise, like I said, I get other stuff delivered to the main thing. So, anyway, you probably saw that. Um, all the Amiga fanboys, check it out, the Amiga Addict. 1st of January 2021, they're still producing this. Wow, well, doesn't that look schmick? Don't copy that floppy. <laughs> the peak Amiga years of software piracy remembered inside. This is uh, great for all you. There's obviously a market out there, and there's still ads paying for it. Yeah, yeah, pick up a pixel. So I assume it pays them uh, to make it. The ads in here are probably still make it viable but that's that's very glossy we'll have a quick squeeze but yeah i'm not an amiga fanboy myself i've done a video on amiga but uh, sadly that was all corroded wasn't it it was like horrible but geez that's a that's a nice bit of work thank you very much there's no there's no note with that they just sent me an amiga at it i love it britain's best-selling active magazine for amiga users i guess there's a whole bunch of them that are like non-active or not as well selling as this are there others
<laughs> like, I can, is there a sustainable market for like more than one? Um, anyway, oh, issue number one, I just noticed. <laughs> so yeah, that, because selling. Oh, come on, come on. The marketing wank is strong with this one. Issue number one already, and then. <laughs> They haven't even sold them because, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe they did a Kickstarter or something like that, and maybe they already got the like the pre-sales, so therefore they could then edit the front cover to say Britain's best-selling active magazine for Amiga users. Um, <laughs> love it. Anyway, what, no cover disc? Ask your newsagent. They'll probably say it's 2021. What did you expect? Um, for those uh, uh, seppos out there, you yanks, uh, you probably don't know what a newsagent is. Um, yeah, it's a place where, like, you buy magazines. I believe it's a strange concept in Yankee land. Huge six-page interview with ex-chief designer and engineer at Commodore, uh, legendary David Haney. Um, I don't think that's David. David doesn't seem uh, old enough, but uh, let's have a squares, meet the addicts, and there you go. Anyway, I won't go through the whole thing, but uh, yeah, that's that's very cool. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's um, Amiga Bill, apparently. <laughs> there you go, exclusive interview with community frontman Amiga Bill, not to be missed. Beautiful. I assume he's got a YouTube channel somewhere. Welcome to the Amiga scene, Amiga culture, and I love it, Pulp Fiction. Anyway, Amiga news. Wow, this is like, there you go, there's the interview, but uh, no, I won't spoil it for you if you want it. Um, go buy the magazine. Support them. If you're an Amiga fanboy, go for it. Wow, how the Amiga helped kill the arcade. Wow, terrific. No, I never had an Amiga when I was a kid. No, nope, my first uh, machine was a Tandy 1000 because, you know, we couldn't afford uh, anything. I had to just hang out at the shops and, you know, I did play around with the Amigas at the shops, but uh, that was about it. So I couldn't afford it. But anyway, well done. Well done, everyone. That's cool. Like it. Thumbs up. Link down below. This next one I am guilty of uh, opening of and even uh, tweeting a photos of it um, because, uh, yeah, it's not a mailbag thing and um, I didn't know, that I, I don't think I knew they were sending this to me so I was wondering what it was. Anyway, it comes from the IEEE, the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, which I am a member of and ta-da, look what they sent me because I have very recently levelled up. I am now, check it out, isn't that shiny? Whoa. Get reflections off the studio lights. I am now a senior member of the IEEE. Look at that. Ah, schmick as. It's not, um, yeah, it's just veneer wood. It's not, you know, it's not solid or anything like that. But that, that's pretty spiffy. So there you go. That's going straight to the pool room. I am pleased to enclose this plaque celebrating your recent elevation as a senior member of the IEEE. In receiving this special honour, you are joining a select few. Less than 10% of our membership achieves this level of professional recognition. Please accept my personal congratulations. Thank you very much. Apparently I get extra benefits and I, like, learn the secret IEEE secret squirrel handshake, probably. I guess that you know, instructions come in the next letter, I guess. Thank you very much. A name I won't try and pronounce because I'll just screw that up completely. Given that the EV Vlog Lab is the pool room, um, yeah, it's going straight to the pool room. I guess. Uh, oh, I don't want to cover up Mr. Fusion. Oh, oh look, look at that. Oh, fits. Oh, you probably can't see that off camera, but beauty. Hi to all my viewers in Canada, and thank you very much to uh, Cyborg Systems. Cyborg as in S-I-Borg Systems. Get it? Anyway, cool. Ontario, Canada. Been to Canada. Love it. It's one of my favourite destinations. And we have, oh, look at this. We have, is this one uh, I don't have? LCR. It's a new LCR meter. Look at this. It's a tweezer LCR meter, which is awesome because I have, that's interesting. They got like a micro USB with easy hooks. Is that what? What's going on there? Not sure what the deal is there. Anyway, this is very cool. So this is the LCR reader. So I won't be doing, well, oh, oh, blue and yellow, para, go para. Australians will know what I'm talking about, or those in Sydney will know what I'm talking about. So does that automatically turn on? No, there's no battery in it. Oh, 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 it just beeped, version 1.44. There we go, look at that, beautiful. Don't know about the colour scheme. It's a red and blue. That's the European uh, rubbish, isn't it? Instead of red and black. So I've actually got down here, I've got like four different, this might make five, I'm not sure, uh, different types of tweezer LCR meters. So please leave a thumbs up and a comment down below if you want me want me to do like a shootout. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's interesting. 
check it out. I assume we're in auto mode. It's showing inductance instead of resistance. I would have expected to show up resistance when I just short the probes out like that. Oh, it, it gives the series resistance 0.02, but it thinks the primary thing is an inductor, whereas the primary thing is a resistor. I, I, hold on to your hat. It's an oscilloscope as well. They're trying to be a jack of all trades. Look at that <laughs> little waveform. Like, I no, just stick to one thing. I mean, I know you get it as a bonus, but uh, you know, yeah, no, just yeah, give me a nice, robust, solid LCR meter. I don't care about seeing waveforms. So I'll try and make this very brief. Made in Canada. Excellent. Um, LCR reader MPI. That's not to be confused with the other one, which is made in Canada, isn't it? Um, anyway, it's got Bluetooth, apparently. 0.1% basic accuracy. Oscilloscope grown. Signal generator grown. Super cap testing. Great. Uh, but, you know, it's designed, like, because it's got the tweezers, like, it's not really designed for, you know, it's designed for doing SMD parts, and that should be it. Still don't get what this is. Detector short turns in transform and inductors but it's got a it, it's got a, a you, oh that's one of those bi-directional uh, micro USB thingies so it does go up to 100 kilohertz a very nice because that's the standard ESR uh, test frequency so that's brilliant um, you know the display looks nice you've got your primary uh, display your secondary display your test frequency and your uh, configuration uh, series or parallel or whatnot Oh, then you've got a menu uh, chart as well. Jeez, nice. <laughs> like lots of functionality built into this. All in one, digital tweezers. And you get the whole manual as well. Terrific. So here's some of your specs, just very briefly. I won't go over them, but resistance, you know, in the order of like uh, 0.1 on uh, the middle ranges. Goes down to 1 milliohm with 0.5% uh, accuracy. You know, very nice. Very nice. 10 ohm range. I love it. Uh, capacitance, you know, in the, like down to as low as 0.1%, you know, of course, up the higher ones, you know, you're going to get your 3%, your 5%, your 10% for your more uh, 40 millifarad range. And that's, you know, <laughs> quite acceptable. So, yeah, specs look pretty decent. And it's supposed to come with a NIST calibration certificate. And it looks like, well, it's got a calibration certificate. It doesn't say anything about NIST traceability, does it? No, it doesn't. Anyway, that's what they advertised, I believe. Oh, it does have Bluetooth data acquisition, so that could be very nice. Like, if you're uh, tweezering away, testing, you know, lots of different uh, parts in production, like you've got them all lined up and you're binning them or uh, something like that, then, uh, yeah, like you could actually log all those values and... Uh, that's, you know, you can get some stats on that. That's pretty terrific. Anyway, I, um, I don't like the color. It kind of looks like toy-like. But, you know, anyway, that's um nice updating. It does beep, 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 beep every time it does a sample. But uh, that looks like it works well. And uh, we're going to the menu. Anyway, I won't go through the whole thing. So most of the time, you're just going to leave it in auto mode and Bob's your uncle. A little bit hard to do my reference cap. But uh, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, she's pretty much bang on. Nice. Can't kind of ask for better than that. If I try and measure my 10 milliohm current shunt resistor, yeah, it's, once again, it hasn't detected it as a resistor, as a primary, um, but it's 0.03. It was 0.25 before, so that looks pretty close to bang on if I actually just manually zero that out with uh, my Mark 1 eyeball. <laughs> Almost bang on there. At least significant digit for the 10 ohm resistor on there. Oh, that's nice. Now it is actually detecting the resistor as the uh, primary, so that's, that is sweet as... Hang on, there's something going on here. Look, I, I think I pushed the button, I did something, and I put it into the manual range, okay? Oh, it looks like, oh, this is actually a joystick, I think. Because look, yeah, I can, yep, impedance, capacitance with ESR, yep, there we go. We're, we're in manual resistance mode now, so that's pretty cool. Put the probes together. Um, I can physically feel them. Going together? Are these contacts no good? What? Oh, there we go. Now it's doing it. I think it's got a dicky contact somewhere. Like, I'm, I'm putting pressure on that. That is definitely closed, and it's just reading my fingers. There's no metal-to-metal -metal contact there. I'm sque And I squeeze it really hard, and it comes on. What the heck? Are these, like... Is this something... I mean, the contacts look... They're gold-plated. They look pretty decent. Um, you know, it's brand new out of the box, so I wouldn't expect there to be any issues there. Is it, like, further up the chain in here? Because these, I think these will be removable, won't they? Oh, no, no, you've got to, no, you've probably got to unscrew it. 
uh, to get them out. Not sure what the deal is there, but that is a bit concerning though. There we go. That works a treat. So if I put a really hold them in like that. No, there we go. No, see, look. If I go like that. But no, no, once again, yeah, it's contacting. Like I'm physically putting force on that. And I have to really have to apply pressure and then it goes, yeah, but Burko, because we're shorting it out. Hmm. Interesting. Is there some sort of contact issue somewhere? I can't, I can't believe it's the gold plated tips. Here's your tips. It doesn't seem to be anything seriously wrong there. Surely that's good enough. Oh, no, no, no. You can kind of, can you see a little bit of wear on them perhaps? When I put those together, I have to apply a huge amount of force to get that to actually measure a contact. Hmm, not good. Oh, we actually got a Bluetooth dongly thing in it. I assume that's a Bluetooth receiver because it's, well, it's blue. Okay, and inside, there we go. Nah, I was never, looks like I was never going to be able to pull that out. Pull the rabbit out of the hat there. We've got a flat flex going all the way down, so that's just like a holder, so you unscrew that. And uh, yeah, you can exchange the probes by the looks of it, but they've got flat flex going down into there. You can see the LiPo battery on the bottom. So yeah, I'll try and get the rest out. We're in. Oh, got a relay. Got a real fair income relay in there. Wow, didn't expect that. Oh, the Bluetooth module's just flapping around in the breeze there. There you go. Got ourselves an Atmel for all you Atmel fanboys. And uh, I won't go into a detailed teardown or analysis of this thing. But uh, obviously we've got some, I don't can't read those numbers from here, but they're probably uh, like input mucks in or uh, something like that. That's probably the ADC, because I don't think uh, with this kind of uh, precision union, you wouldn't probably wouldn't be using the Intel, uh, the internal uh, ADC on your micro there. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure what uh, Bluetoothy module that is, but it's just off the shelf and uh, there's nothing else special. But yeah, they're, like they're wired there's on, look. They're just like, it's kind of, it's almost like an afterthought, really, the uh, Bluetooth module on that. So that's a bit disappointing, but uh, anyway, as long as it does the business, Bob's your uncle, no worries. And uh, yeah, there we go, there's our little flat flex for both uh, inputs. So apart from the Bluetooth module flattening around the breeze, that's pretty neat and tidy. And doll, yeah, of course, um, I forgot that this would have a USB port on the thing, and it looks like uh, you can actually use it to um, do some uh, testing as well. So uh, what does it not have the regular data interface? Um, that's kind of weird because I assume that's, you know, a regular USB and that's how you do your uh, firmware updating. But I don't know, remains to be seen. Anyway, there you go. That is the LCR reader, all-in-one digital multimeter tweezers. Um, a, a very, very quick look. I can't give you any uh, verdict on that unless I compare it with the others and do a full review. But it looks like it's probably going to do the business. Um, just maybe a contact issue there. Yep, still doing it, even after I put it back together. Anyway, made in Canada. Linked down below. Check it out. Hi to all my viewers in Hong Kong which is not China, Hong Kong. Uh, thank you very much to uh, uh, Finersi, uh, Finrisi, I forget how I pronounce, how you're supposed to pronounce the name. You obviously, you've heard that name before because I've reviewed a couple of their stuff. So uh, you're probably, they're probably getting multiple sucks of the sav here. Although I guess, is this the first time they sent something in the mailbag? Asian countries do like to uh, cover their boxes in tape. Uh, brown tape, it's always brown. It's always brown tape. They just like, you, you, so you can't just like slice these things open. It's just like, they're a real pain to open. So bugger it. This one's quite big. Their other uh, products were quite small. So, oh yeah, it's small. Oh, what? Oh, oh, I got two. I got bonus. We got two. We're having multiple sucks of the savvy in the one email. And oh, this is good. I can reuse the bubble wrap. Fantastic. Oh, that's handy. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is oddly satisfying. Sealed for our own protection. Comes in a nice looking case. Let's have a look. Ta da! What do we got? Oh. It's just got more! 
Oh wow, this is a uh, this is a power supply. Oh, cool bananas. Okay, so 70 watts in. Oh, it's got a USB power delivery. I'm not um, sold on the uh, sort of like chrome looking buttons and knob and stuff like that. But you know, anyway, and it's got a little fan on the back. So it's up to, well, it's got 70 watts on here. Um, so obviously, you know, it's obviously none of that linear rubbish. It's a switching uh, supply. So that comes in a little case. What do we got here? No, there's no like a uh, Fursi branding on it or anything like that. Yep, this is a scope. Got some probes. We got another scope. Yeah, I've already looked at two Fursi scopes, haven't I? At 110 megahertz. And yeah, the previous one's uh, it's got a little rubber baby buggy bumper on it. Uh, previous one left a bit to be uh, desired in terms of uh, its uh, performance. It was like okay up to 20 megahertz and it didn't work up to its claimed uh, 100 megahertz. Oh, that's a joystick. I thought that was a button. No, it's a little, uh, little nipple, nipple joystick. So we'll switch that on. So there it is, boots up quick and um, we're in. So yeah, once again, this is not something, maybe we'll do a quick two minute teardown in this, but this is not something that I can review in the mailbag. Well, it turns out that uh, Fursi have entered the realm of RD Tech, who are the current uh, leaders for those little power supply modules. I've done quite a few videos on those, and uh, yeah, they've they they sort of like pioneered uh, the field, really. And uh, Fursi, uh, this is their like standalone uh, product, but they also have uh, little modules like the RD Tech ones, and this one uh, you can get on AliExpress for like thirty six bucks. That's not its normal price; it's about sixty. It's like 40% off or something, um, but that's just insane. It is absolutely insane. Anyway, uh, you know, it's uh, very similar to the RD Tech uh, ones in that it's a boost uh, converter. So I think when we take it apart, we'll probably just see, like, this is probably just their panel version. Uh, you can probably just buy this as the panel, and then it will have uh, the power uh, stuff in the back of it. Um, so, yeah, I think they might just uh, sell the module itself. Anyway, um, yeah, like, this, very similar to the RD Tech uh, ones. We're talking... Um, it's just a buck uh, converter, this particular one, so it's not a uh, SEPIC uh, type converter that can do boost and buck, so you can't put, uh, like, power this from like a 5 volt uh, USB pack or 5 volt external in and then expect to get like in this case it's uh, rated for 0 to 60 volts output you can only get uh, lower than what you put in so it's rated for a 6 volt to 70 volt input or USB power delivery presumably and a 0 to uh, 60 volt out at 0 to 6 amps so um yeah it's quite the beast you know ripple is quite high it's 100 millivolts um but uh, the display is going to have resolution of 1 milliamp and 10 millivolts uh current is half a percent uh, the accuracy of the voltage is about 0.3 uh, percent so you know it's like just one of these little cheap power supply modules let's take it apart because unfortunately i don't my uh usb power delivery uh brick is missing in action so yeah we'll have to either power it from an external supply i won't be able to test that now i liked how they used the uh gold brass uh screws for the front and these ones um the cheaper ones for the back uh, they did that for looks obviously so somebody's thinking it would have been nice to get like some nice alloy uh socket caps or something you know that would have been sweet make it look a bit jazzy but it's already a bit <laughs> how you doing looking with the buttons i don't like the yeah no oh no i was completely wrong about the uh module thing but they do actually sell uh little module based versions of this anyway um yeah this is custom uh designed for this uh case so you can see the output uh banana plugs directly uh soldered onto the board looks a bit crusty burger doesn't it um not the best thing going and I don't even want to know what brand caps those are. They'll be nothing special, let me tell you, for this uh, <laughs> this price point. Jeez, you know, you're not asking much. Um, but these offer, all these types of modules now, just offer incredible uh, bang per buck in terms of, like, getting at least a good selection of power supplies for your lab. They're just absolutely incredible. Anyway, little tiny little fan on there that's probably loud, but uh, yeah, um, big switching inductor in there. And uh, yep, we've got some caps and, you know, that's about all she wrote. Not sure if it's a similar topology to the RD uh, Tech 1. Yeah, we'll have a look in the uh, full review. Maybe somebody, maybe someone on the EV blog forums already reverse engineered one of these puppies. Who knows? I don't know. If anyone's got a schematic, leave it in the comments. But uh, 
yeah, there you go. I mean, um, do, what more do you want for your 36 bucks? It's just like insane uh, value. And especially that it has, like, you know, it's got the DC jack, it's got the banana jacks input and the uh, power delivery as well. Uh, power delivery is a tricky standard, so I wouldn't uh, race into thinking that, oh, it's going to, you know, supply up to a couple hundred watts or something from the, the maximum from the power delivery. It might only be rated to certain things that uh, often they're not really fully compatible they're buggy and all sorts of stuff so yeah but that uh, three different input uh dc types and uh it looks like it's got a usb on the output to power usb devices that's pretty cool bananas yeah incredible value wow oh there's your output uh there's your output current shunt all right i'm putting uh 64 volts in that's the highest my supply will go up to without uh series in them and uh 10 volts uh output that was its uh, default and sure enough uh that's good more than good enough for australia so 9.98 no wackers so that's just on off like that pretty simple and uh then your va here you just choose oh yeah it goes white there and then we can adjust oh no we can't no, we can't. What? What? Set. Oh, there. Oh, then you got to choose your digit. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. Not the best. Yeah, I reckon that user interface should have just gone automatically into there rather than just, uh, you know, choose. But then I guess no, you've got to choose a digit. But no, it would have been nicer to to set the resolution that you want when you're going like that. But it just would have been nicer to do that anyway there's no velocity control on that so that's a bit how you're doing but the uh, display on that's very reminiscent of the rd tech ones isn't it but anyway uh, i like that they got a timer there that uh okay so it's been powered on for three minutes and 23 seconds how do you can you reset that oh whoa okay we just switched it off there we go go straight in there's no like um a splash screen or anything and the time stays there that's interesting. So I'm not sure how you reset that. I'm not going to RTFM just now. Anyway, let's say 57.6 volts and we'll put a load on. So current set of 1.2 amps here. Let's just go for a constant current of, say, 1 amp here. So that's 57 watts. 0 0.986, 0 0.997. That's a little bit out. Don't know if that's still within spec, but uh, fan's not turning. So there you go. That's good. Because these things are going to be uh, quite reasonably efficient, although, you know, you'd have to do the full characteristic curve. It's actually a lot of effort to, uh, if you want to get the full uh, characteristic curves of all this for uh, the different voltage range inputs, and you have to get, like, get a parametric uh, sweep of all the different voltage inputs to out versus output uh, curves. So you need, like, multiple curves. You can't just get one. Anyway, that's kind of working that's all i wanted to check is that magic smoke didn't escape and it's not escaping and uh she's not getting she's not getting warm at all at 56 watts anyway not a full review that's the uh nur nursey fursey i don't know they've actually got an f dash in here so i guess it's nursey um probably somebody corrected me on the previous video i'm sure uh dc 6006 l and well for just insane like this is currently 36 bucks at 40 percent off on aliexpress linked in down below i mean geez you know i mean even if it's it doesn't work that great it, it doesn't matter it's for the price it's, it's just insane what you can get with these power supply modules these days incredible oh, i forgot to read the note Hi, dear David. I am product manager of Nursey Fursey from China. I am Asul. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Our company is Shenzhen Fi Ni Ru Sai. Ah, there you go. So, <laughs> Fi Ni Ru Sai. Fi Ni Ru Sai. That's how you pronounce it. Okay, I'm butchering the pronunciation still, but... Or Fei Ni Ru Sai. I don't know. I'm butchering it either way. Um, <laughs> we believe uh, you remember. Yes, I remember the oscilloscope. That is an excellent mini oscilloscope, so they say themselves. We also saw that you made a great video. In your video, we also learned our shortcomings. Our term, team updated the 1013D flat panel oscilloscope, updated in the 5012. Yep. Uh, the new uh, the new 1C15. Is that what we got? I guess this is the new 1C15. Look, there's no model number on it. The new 1C, this is the new 1C15. There you go. And a DC, um, and the power supply we just looked at. Following QR code to download the manual. There you go. Thank you very much. All right. So this is the, I guess, the replacement. Oh, yeah, there it is. There's the model. And this is the ProDur certification. <laughs> Fantastic. 
So anyway, we get a little scope of Proby, uh, times 1 times 10. That's, you know, what is that? Oh, yeah, it's a little 100 megahertz jobby. We also get some alligator clip leads and a weird-ass uh, non-Australian plug with a how-you-doing power adapter. Oh, yeah, wouldn't use that one. Okay, here we go. We're powering it on. And yeah, 1C15, it pops up on there. Um, the screen is, like, yeah, the angle's actually... It's okay. It's like it's it, it's not great, but it's you know it's adequate, especially when the price on these things is like naff all. And there you go, the little joystick just moves your channel up and down, and it moves your trace left and right. There you can see it up the top, and you can see it within the window. Uh, it looks like yeah, no, we aren't seeing. There's nothing beyond the window because that's why even have that. Why even have that at all if there's going to be like nothing beyond. The window anyway um maybe at different time bases but anyway uh seconds nanoseconds uh the layout here like seconds oh yeah i guess that makes sense having them in that direction yeah because you want it to like you know because the x um because that changes your x and this changes your y millivolts yeah i guess that's this is the times one that probe so uh 10 5 2 1 it's got the 125, so, oh, I heard a relay click. I'm sure I did. 20 millivolts minimum range, you know, but uh, for a little pocket scope, that's fine. We don't care about the performance in this video, so we're going to whip this open. Uh, yeah, a little tilt-in bail, nice and wide, though. So let's crack it open. And there we have it. Uh, well, we got, uh, isn't that the same as similar? Oh, there's a hair in there. There's a hair in there. Can't remember the exact uh, layout of the previous one, but wasn't it the same? Didn't they have an ST Arm Micro and an Altera Max 2 uh, FPGA and um, sample memory and, and the ADC? And that was a bit, and then that was it, but they were like underclocking the ADC or, uh, yeah, no, it was like they were doing some weird multiplexing thing and it was coming to gutsa. Um, why they've got gunk on there, I'm not sure. They rubbed the numbers off there. No, they haven't. It's just really difficult. It's an MXT2088. And here's the data sheet for that. Unfortunately, um, not in English, but uh, yeah, it's pretty clear that's an eight dual 8-bit eight uh, 100 meg sample per second, assuming that's on both channels. The best they can do for this is 200 uh, meg samples per second. I haven't checked the specs on this, but 200 meg samples per second. How are they going to get their... 100 megahertz, 110 megahertz bandwidth with 200 meg samples per second. Mm, yeah, I think the same uh, funny business is going on here as happened to the previous one where they were doing the same thing with the uh, analog devices ADC. So I don't, I, yeah, I don't know. Requires a full review and investigation of this thing to see what's going on. But look, it's beyond the uh, scope of this video. <laughs> Get it? Scope? I'm here all week. Uh, it's beyond the scope of this video to, uh, you know, go into more details. I don't want to... I'll leave it to a separate video if everyone's anyone's interested in this. But, you know, they've already had many sucks of the sav. I mean, you know, it's, it looks like right off the bat, 110 meg again. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to do that. And once again, like, um, and the front end. Isn't the front end like, oh, no, 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 it's better. It, so have they got like a FET front end this time? Maybe? Not sure what's going on. Anyway, I'll whack a high-res photo of my new light box over on the uh, EV look forum. Okay, very quick check. Uh, 50 ohm terminated input, uh, 100 megahertz, uh, 3 volts peak to peak. Let's see what we get. Yeah, nah. Um, same problem that we got before, isn't it? Um, trust me, there's no modulation, no AM modulation on this uh, signal. No, it's just, well, of course, it's going to come and guts are there. It's it's measuring it. It's saying it's 100 megahertz. can actually measure the thing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, 2.72 volts peak to peak. It's kind of sort of getting there, but it's just, no, 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 no. And 10 megahertz, there you go, that's a little bit better. Let's just push that back. Can you center that? You can't just center it. That's kind of annoying. Um, but, oh yeah, it's a bit... How are you doing? It's a bit wobbly. But yeah, 3.3 volts. Uh, that could be the linearity of my generator. Let me double check that. Oh yeah, 3.24, 3.23, something like that. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, 10 megahertz. What I'm going to do is just wind the frequency up and uh, see if she comes a gutter. 15, oh, 
20. Whoa, I'm not sure what's going on there. 20. Th whoa. Hey. <laughs> She's jumping all around. Jumping jackrabbit at 25 megahertz. Um, yeah, not sure what the <laughs> problem is there with the jitter. Oh, goodness. Oh, boy. Yeah, once again, look. Look, we're getting, like, look at that. It's getting modulation. No, nah, there's, there's sampling issues. This is 35 megahertz. 47, that's 50 megahertz. Nah, this is just, this is terrible, Muriel. Nah, I don't think they've improved anything at all. Nah. <laughs> anyway, um, there'll be, I'll put in a link uh, to a specific thread for this over on the EV blog forum because a lot of people uh, talked about the previous one. A lot of people actually, a few people actually reverse engineered the thing and they analysed it and did experiments with it and all sorts of uh, stuff to see if it was like a usable platform. They could actually reprogram. I'm not sure if anyone actually did that because it's just got an STR micro in it. So, um, yeah, anyway, I'll link it in. But, <laughs> yeah. Next up, got one from the United States of America. Thank you very much, uh, Kev. Kev from uh, Medina, Ohio. How do I my people in Ohio? Chris Gamble was formerly from Ohio. Now he's in bloody Chicago. Oh, okay, it has the uh, paper folded over the top. Got it. Nothing that can't be fixed with the knife. Got the DigiKey wrap. It is a, hang on, hang on. Oh, 3D printed box. We have a note. It's a trig board. There you go. Um, I don't know what a trig board is. Obviously, it does some sort of triggering. Does it do some sort of scope triggering or something? It's version 8. It's gone through a few revisions. Check it out. It's got the Wi-Fi's. It's got one of those Wi-Fi processors on it. Not sure which one. My battery just very rudely died in the ass. Anyway, let's have a squiz. There it is. Oh, no, no. Face tracking off. Face tracking off, Dave. I think I need, I didn't enable uh, product shot. Oh, come on. Didn't enable product shot, but yeah, there it is. Little trig board. And this is another board, which I don't know what this is. Little, uh, I just goes into a headery thing. Oh, is that a serial? Is that a uh, 232 serial? Kevin Dara calls himself the trig board guy. <laughs> Been a huge fan of you uh, for years. Thank you very much. Inspired me to start my own channel. Awesome. I'll link in his channel. Uh, lol, that was like 10 years ago now. <laughs> right, yeah, I think he mentioned this somewhere. Um, but anyhow, heads up, I just wanted to send you something I've been working on a while now called the trig board. I got this obsession with low power design. Awesome. Spare Boy is a single digit uh, ESP32 board, uh, wakes on contact, open, close, plus timer. Anyhow, I shoot over to the mailbag. I'm not expecting to see a celebrity appearance of it in your next mailbag video or anything, but man, that would be cool. Oh, you're in the mailbag. You send stuff to PO Box 7949, Norwest, New South Wales, 2153, Australia, not Austria. You get on the mailbag. Cool, I'll link to Kev's channel and we'll check out the trig board. I still don't know what it does. It's a low power ESP32 that wakes up. There's a fair bit of business going on on the bottom there. Oh, okay, right, oh, okay, so that plugs into there. Right, so that makes it a USB interface thing. Anyway, close up required. So this is the little uh, trig board kit, and it's all documented on his uh, site. Very comprehensive. He's got uh, videos on it as well. So this is the uh, trig board itself. This is, as I said, the uh, RS-232 uh, serial uh, USB interface, uh, just to program the thing. And um, he's just given me a, a, that's a little read switch. If you haven't seen a read switch before, there it is. And then this is just a magnet and two little contacts in there and it just uh, opens and closes and that's what the trig board does. I like these little simple one, you know, just designed for one, just to do one thing and that's it. So you hook a battery on here, it supports uh, lithium ion batteries as well as uh, in this particular case uh, two uh, AAAs like this. It's got 1.5 microamps uh, standby power consumption so that's like sniff of an oily rag like shelf life of the battery stuff practically. Anyway we've got an expressive uh, ESP uh, 32 on here with the Wi-Fi's and of course you know you program it to hook up uh, to your Wi-Fi and all it does is detect a, a the sensor here be it a uh, like an infrared uh, per sensor motion detector for example or in this case the uh, read switch that we have you know somebody opens a door or a window or something like that uh, they whether they break in or you just want some motion detection uh, for what whatever reason it is and um, and then it, it simply does a connects to the Wi-Fi wakes up connects the Wi-Fi does a push uh, notification and then it can use uh, services like uh, you know if this then that or any of you know 
couple of other uh, of those similar types of uh, services to then, you know, a treat like do stuff and, you know, send a notification on your phone, send an email, do whatever. So yeah, it's just got a uh, reset and a wake button there and you know, so you can just manually uh, trigger the thing, I guess. And that's all it does. But of course, you know, you could program it to do other things, but that's its uh, uh, primary purpose. So uh, there you go. I just love those, you know, single dedicated function board. So that's actually quite comprehensive on the back there. That's uh, quite a dense uh, double-sided load, actually. And the uh, documentation on his website for this, uh, it's really something to behold. Uh, definitely check out the link below. Um, it's really <laughs> comprehensive. So awesome work, mate. This is, uh, yeah, this is neat. I, I won't go to the effort to, like, you know, uh, program the thing and, uh, like, uh, power it up just for this uh, mailbag. But I'm sure it does the business. He's put a lot of effort into this. This is, like, Rev, uh, uh, this is version 8. Um, so, yeah, it's gone through a lot of iterations. I'm sure it uh, works out absolutely flawlessly so i just love dedicated stuff like that it just does one job and does it well and that's it so anyway subscribe to kev's channel he's about to hit 100k i'm sure we can <laughs> fling him way past the 100k and get that youtube silver award definitely deserves it well worth a sub doesn't say who this one's from but it's from uh, melbourne uh that's in victoria quite all my victorian viewers and Uh, it's a no-name, but it's got a, it's a metal can. Ooh, it could be a, I think this is like a bit of old bit of kit, and I'm suspecting a teardown of some description. Whoa, what is that? Big ass metal can, ding connector on the back, and on the front, I haven't looked at it yet, you're the first to see it, what is it? It's a, a, it's a print, it's got a printer port, and then it's a FLP, whatever that is. I don't know, what on earth is this thing? Uh, I don't know, it's some industrial bit of kit. Um, I don't know, it's no note. Okay, what is this thing? I've got no idea. Um, Looks pretty old school, looks like, you know, like 80s or something. If you do know what it is, I'll leave it in the comments down below. Uh, let's crack it open. <laughs> well, hello. Um, that's chocker, isn't it? Uh, got a Varda lithium battery in there. That's almost, uh, well, it's likely uh, kaput after all this time. Is that a, like a reset switch or something? I don't know, but uh, yeah, very comprehensive. Do these boards just, do they just pull out or? Uh, What's, what's the deal? Uh, yeah, I think they might. Just extra force required. You can't get a real good grip on them, though. Ah, jeez. It's full of boards. Check this out. This is great. <laughs> The designer obviously went to a lot of trouble to ensure you can't plug the wrong board into the wrong slot. They're all like subtly staggered like this and then they went, oh, did, did I run out of room? Oh, good, because I had to route this around here like this. Oh, I'll just shift this one back, but it doesn't line up with anything else. And some are two row, some are three row. So it's absolutely impossible to plug them into the wrong thing. So yeah, that's great. I mean, <laughs> why have we got a big ass inductor? Just flapping around in the breeze up there, I don't know, but uh, yeah, none of that um, solder mask rubbish. Good old uh, old fashioned tin plate, and it is a uh, double sided job. There you go, 8031 classic, got our ROMA, got our RAM. That's a nice looking socket, isn't it? I don't think I've seen one like that before, that's pretty fancy pantsy. Um, Jenny, anyway, um, yeah, we've got some IO, the 8255, 8254, what else have we got? Another 8255 with its own crystal, and uh, we've got some analog goodness going on here. Lots of trannies on there. Is that like a socketed relay or something? We've I mean, just got a whole bunch of uh, 4000 series CMOS, thank you very much. And another board, uh, which is looks like it's got, it's got some AMD uh, stuff on there, but uh, yeah, some more 4000 series logic, some Motorola, you know, some sort of drivers or something. And then, this looks uh, kind of special, like it's... Uh, the main purpose of this thing, what's a PCF 1100 DB? Anyway, that's got a little uh, companion board, that's just doing some uh, latching and stuff, nothing special there. Got a bodge wire, uh, 
Another 8255 board with bodge wire. And then on the uh, processor, oh, that's got some tin plate on the bottom. So all the boards are, are all over the shop, aren't they? Um, they're all quite different. Well, it turns out the uh, PCF 1100 there, and we've got uh, two of them. Uh, these are gate arrays, like custom gate arrays. So they're, yeah, doing some custom special thing. Uh, that It doesn't tell us anything at all about this. Ah. <sighs> What we do know is that unless there's signals on the inner layer, um, and I don't think there is, then, um, yeah, there's not many connections coming into this uh, gate array at all. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's doing something, but like nothing serious. I mean, look at the lack of tracks on this thing. It's just like, there's hardly anything. So, yeah, they're doing something serious that requires a lot of gate array action. I mean, these, these won't be big gate arrays, I don't think, but not like large uh, PLD type stuff. But obviously, like, maybe they're processing some serial data or something like that, perhaps. I don't know, 7400 there. Um, that's like, meh. Anyway, I was right about the date on this. I mean, we've got 86, uh, there's 88. Um, most of it's 86. Is that even? Yeah, it looks like 88. Everything else seems to be like 86, 85, something like that. So anyway, um, it's it's mid to late 80s vintage, which is what uh, you would guess. But um, what what does it do? I don't know. It's an LCD. It's got an 8031 processor. It's got some gate arrays to do something special that the processor couldn't. Uh, so maybe it just it needed some you know faster real timey action uh, for that, but it seems to be like doing some serial decoding or something, and it's got lots of, uh, you know, the bus latching and other stuff going on, and it's got some analogy goodness. I don't think we saw an ADC on there, did we? So, I don't know. I don't think it's like converting, it's not like it's getting any analog sensor data and uh, converting it. So yeah, I don't know. That's a very strange one. Um, it's it's got like registers and stuff, like register and you know, all registers, LP monitor mode, uh, battery. Does it? Uh, well, obviously not room for an internal uh, battery in the thing, but um, AL alarm maybe LT one up and down per program enter. I don't know. Um, <laughs> leave it in the comments if you got any clue whatsoever, because I don't. Hello.